happy weekend happy saturday how is your weekend going welcome welcome thank you for joining us hello welcome for me welcome shelly I mean, you need to send me a request so that I can add you. I don't see any requests. I don't see that you sent a request. I only saw that you wave your hand. Okay, I can see the request now. <clears throat> I've accepted your request. I don't know why. <laughs> Good evening, ma'am. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening. Happy weekend. Good evening. Good evening. I hope the weekend is going on well. Mine is very short. Very short weekend. <laughs> oh, should I say the Saturday is very short? But it's all well. It's all good. I'll be fine. Welcome, welcome. Today we are talking about money. Yeah. <laughs> every every lady's favorite topic. <laughs> Am I correct? Yes. Money is every lady's favorite topic. Try mm. those those people that like to shop. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Have you? Hi everyone. Oh, Thank you for joining the live. Oh. Welcome to the conversation by one diva global community here we discuss different topics various topics that are related to women so stay tuned and if you are a guy here please send this live to a lady to your female friends sisters aunties cousins whatever okay so let's dive into the topic straight away so that we don't waste too much time we are discussing trusting God for your finances. Trusting God for your finances. First of all, is it even possible to trust God for finances? Does if is God concerned about our finances? Does it really concern him like that? Is it really interesting? Let's hear from let's hear from Sophia. You think God is really interested in our finances, Sophia? Yeah. Does it really concern you? I mean the guy has a lot of things to do. So think of it's not my money, but you know. Okay. Good evening. Um, when we talk about something that something that what is it? A little bit. Can you turn up your volume a little bit higher? No, no. There's a background noise somewhere. I'm not sure. Is it okay? It has stopped now. No, it's back again. Background noise hasn't stopped, but yes, but you can hear me, yes, right? It's better than you. Okay, so uh, when we see a scripture like um, he has given us power to make wealth, he says that, you know, that shows us that God is interested in our finances. When we look at the story of um, Isaac and Abraham, these are people that were into sales, right? They were selling and they were progressing. That shows that if God was promoting them in their businesses, that's timely memorial, meaning that it's a long time you know, we were not there. These are, we read these stories, and there's a conviction in our heart that God is interested, and God is interested in seeing us prosper. You know, He says He wishes above all things that we prosper. What is prospering? It's not just prospering in your spirituality, it's not just prospering in your maybe personal development or your finances, meaning that you are not poor. He mentioned riches in different scriptures that we can bring out in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So riches, riches, supply all your needs, riches in glory, meaning that there is money. Um, looking at Solomon, Solomon did not ask for wealth, but God gave him wealth. David said, I've taken care, you know, leave an inheritance for your children's children. He took care of, you know, even Solomon, the, the children that were born before Solomon, and then those that were born after Solomon. So when Solomon came, the Bible described it as Solomon resting, you understand? So Solomon resting, meaning that he didn't have any battle to fight again. There was so much wealth that he had to build that tabernacle. 
that they looked at the greatest savannah pool in the history of the world. So um, God is interested in our finances. There's no need to shy away from it. There's no way to pretend. You know, why do people feel like a lot of Christians are, are um, a lot of Christians don't have wisdom in terms of money, investment, and all of that. Now, that brings me to that scripture that Jesus said, the children of the world are wiser than the children of the church. We'll talk about that later, so let somebody else take over. <laughs> so I'll explain what okay. I... So for me, what do you think? Do you think God is interested in our friends? Do you support? Do you think what she said is correct? Do you think she she she's saying... She's she's talking good when it concerns God and our finances. Do you share the same sentiment or you have a different opinion? Can you hear me for me? Jessica, could you come again, please? I couldn't okay, hear so you. I was saying, do you agree with her? Do you share the same sentiment with Sophia that God is interested in our, in our finances? That God, oh, I can't seem to hear you clearly. Maybe it's my next do, I'm not sure. Do you, do you share the same sentiment with Sophia that God is interested in our finances? Or do you have a different opinion entirely? Of course. Of course. No, I don't have a different opinion. So tell me, <laughs> why, do, why do you think God is interested in our finances? Because somebody might be okay. wondering, I am God that has no one to take care of. Is it my money? Why would he be interested in my 50k that I'm earning money? Or my 100k I'm earning money? Someone might be here that wants to hear me. All right. So one thing, one thing I want us to know is in this our time and age, right? People find it very difficult. It's, it's like a big challenge to trust God. So not just in finances, in every single areas of our lives. It will interest you. I like I like using this analogy, right? So um, you are boarding a plane, right? You want to travel, okay? You don't know whether the pilot is trained, whether the pilot has a license. You don't know anything about it, but you, you have, have that body body again. You have that <laughs> You have that, be looking for that, 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 that pilot will take you to your destination. So if you can trust the pilot, somebody. Sometimes we don't even see the pilot. We don't even see him. We don't enter. <laughs> we don't even see the pilot. Whether it's human being that is driving the plane no. <laughs> or animal, we don't know. We just enter like that. Her, her network has gone off. Are you there? Okay. Her network has gone off. So. I think it's really is our network. <laughs> that was a very interesting, or oh, that's a very interesting analogy because the last time when I boarded a plane, I didn't even remember that something called pilot. <laughs> I just know that I entered. <laughs> I just know I entered. To the place that I go, I, I was like, oh, wait, so it's pilot that is driving this thing, really. Who am I? <laughs> I didn't. You know, I, that was the last thing that, that crossed my mind. Mm. And you see, it just goes to how because some things are being replicated we just automatically mm. just have faith mm. in them because we know planes will fly <laughs> so yes you can be doing the pilot can they are never failed there are times we know we've asked maybe mm -hmm. you will just thought about something in your heart. You've not even prayed it, and God gives you the answer. Why don't we remember mm -hmm. all those times? And they say, ah, if God has done, if God did this thing two years ago, if God picked me, ah, this thing, if God can do this, then he can do this one. Why is it that we always forget? <laughs> we always forget the faithfulness of God, and you just say, hey, God, how will I do this? How will I do this? How will I? Even sleeping and waking up is even a miracle, because some people did not sleep and wake up. Yes, yeah, some people slept and they wake up. So why why do we why do you think Christians because this is a Christian community and then we cater to Christians right also if you're not a Christian you're also welcome to join mm. us but why do you think Christians have that you know have that challenge in trusting God especially when God has been faithful He has always been faithful why do you think we always get into the into the into the space of disbelief or distrust to say ha hey how will I do this now you know. Talk to us. So I'm thinking, um, you know, it's like, like you have a box. You know, you like a box. You know, some like you, 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 you now, you're a makeup artist. You know, you have a box. For example, you are going to do a bridal makeup. You go without your big box. They, it's just when I saw one of them open their own, I said, Ah, is this what you people carry? Is hey. <laughs> so imagine how the makeup artist is 
you know, making sure that there's no child that will just come and fall that. You know what can happen to your goods? Ha. Oh, sorry for me. So, you know what can happen to your Try to join in again. You know what can happen to your goods? You, know you know how you take that box very seriously. That's how people have, we have different different boxes that we have segmented in our lives that God cannot come near this part. You know, this is part of the foundation. If it's possible. So, Sophia, your volume has gone low. Can you increase and I'm it? Still, still, and I'm still, it's still loud. Okay. So okay. I can hear you now. Yes, yes. so okay, before, before Fumi takes over. So now, when you now segment, you know, Inside that, your makeup box, that big one that they go about to do, all those professional, whatever, they now segment the part that, okay, this one, like where you have all those eyelashes and the rest, if they fall, it's not really bad. But imagine the part where you have powder and the foundation spilling. So that's how a lot of Christians have segmented different aspects of their life. So they don't want, like now, for Christians that don't believe in paying tithes, I'm sorry I have to bring it up because that's the one that has been going on for over five years now. So I could say, I even saw someone post that I've, been, I've not been paying tithes for 10 years and nothing has, you know, my life is still going well. I said, ah. <laughs> I, me, I, will not, I did not reply him because it's not my business. Everybody can do what they want. Right. Because when you start, they will start arguing. There's no need. Let's everybody do what they want. So you see, and when you now say, God cannot come into this part of my life. God, mind your business here. I give you the part of my health. I give you my marriage. I give you my children. But money, don't come there. So that's how, this, the way we are hiding money from our spouses, let me use it like that. Some people have added God. <laughs> yeah. Some people have added God as a rival. I don't know what no. you're talking about. <laughs> I'm telling you what is happening. Like, am I telling like, somebody gives you that, you would not tell your spouse. Why? What is all see? <laughs> then that's the same way they are saying, No, God cannot have this part of this. You know, we are analyzing mm -hmm. and we are forgetting who gave you the job. Why mm -hmm. you have that? You, okay, you say you are not working for anybody. Okay, the business idea, who gave you? How did you get a brain to think? How did you put all this in? So by the time we, you know, we are all running helter skelter, looking for how to put God in some segmented areas like that makeup kit or box. That's why people don't trust God for finances. When they need money, they first of all think of that sister. I used to ask my spouse, why is it that when we need something, the first person we don't go to is, we don't go to God first. People need healing first, they run her task Then they now say, oh yeah, go to God. You see, we make God our last option. Last resort. Oh, why? Mm -hmm. Why? So I think that this is the reason, because we have been so... We have been too much of the ones that are in charge of our lives. Therefore, we, mm. we find it hard to now give God an aspect that is very important. What happened to the promises of God? He said you supply all your, all your needs. Are you the one supplying it? Okay, what happens without the job? So, you know, they said there's only someone that can think, really, that can give thanks. These are the things that we don't do. People don't sit down and, you know, you just say, ah, salary is coming on the Salary is coming on the We already know where it's going. Eh? And giving God is not part of it. So we need to, you know, come to the level that we understand that God is in charge. He gave us the power to make this world. He, wh wherever you are, whatever you are doing, whether you're an artisan, whether you're a career person, or you, you run a company for yourself, like my sister here, and... The truth is that God is still in charge. People rise. And people, I've seen people that way, you know, millions, and all of a sudden, bam. <laughs> when I mean bam, they have to move out of their duplex. They have to post school fees. <laughs> you think God is, is God dead? God is dead. He's seen. And you see, it's not that they pay tight. Something was just wrong. So that's what many Christians don't understand. That when you think you are in charge and you know it's all, what if God decides to leave you to learn a lesson? Do you want to be living in a career and all of a sudden you have to move to Mushi or somewhere you can? You know, I'm using that as an example because that's how terrible some No shit. 
to mush no. people we love you no, I'm just, <laughs> yes, so that they won't be, yeah thank you for bringing that up. i'm just saying because some people say no i cannot move to this area why there's some people that oh, even live, there are some people that even live very well in that area. I'm just using an example. Lagos people will understand my point. For someone that they say, ah, he was living in Soso Pia, no, no, yeah, now. You know, that's how it looks. But what people don't get is, are you giving God every part of your life? And when it comes to money, because we have to trust God. You can pray about everything. Don't bring them here. No, don't do that. So you can pray about everything, but you will not bring God into your finances. You believe that, oh, I know I have a business plan. Oh, I have this investment. You know, and they don't come. We don't come to God. Everybody just said, oh, everybody's investing in social business. You run there. See, please go so that they don't come here. Sorry about that. So everybody's investing in this business. You run and join them. Oh, everybody, you know, all because you think you know, you think your expertise is the one that has been keeping you. How? Who told you so? Like you mentioned that people sleep and don't wake up. Is it a lie? It's not a lie. What is the thing that made you wake up? You, your alarm? <laughs> or you are shopping? Oh, yeah. <laughs> My body has mastered for a year. Who said it? There's nothing like body mastery. <laughs> Only the grace of God. So um, it's very important for us to understand that Trusting God with your finances is not negotiable. What God said is, yeah. when they try to, let me hurry up a hand over. They try to, to um, manipulate Jesus, right? By saying, hey, they said this or this. Or, what did Jesus say? Give unto Caesar, that's which is Caesar. People want to dodge paying tithe. People want to dodge paying taxes. But Jesus came because they will say there's no scripture that Jesus said we should pay tithe. Why did he say give unto Caesar that which is Caesar's? Because Jesus himself knows that they wanted to use a cunning means to make him say, don't pay taxes. But he said no. And he answered there. He said, give unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. So there's no argument here. Obviously, that means that if God says you should pay tithes, pay it. If they say you should pay taxes, pay it. And then trust me for the rest. That's all. There are simple answers, but we want to argue. We want to dwell on, oh, what this pastor said. Hey, what they are doing with the money. You say you are, you are buying car with your money. Were you there? <laughs> and I used to wonder, who told you? Were you there? You were there when they withdrew your money from the church and took it to buy a house. Were you there? So these are the misconceptions that we have as Christians that we have chosen to buckle up the finance in one box and say, no, anything finance, God is out of it. I'll give offering, I'll give to the poor. I have people that say, I'll give to the poor. I'll give, I'll give when I see people in it, but <laughs> forget <laughs> your, those men of God, they are taking them. You don't know that some poor, some poor, they are, they are what are they called, they are clay soy. <laughs> hey, what's that soy that does not, that does not hmm. produce fruit? You don't know that there are some poor people like that. <laughs> you just be putting money on baskets. Like, so you, you are pitting them that ah, we're giving mm -hmm. based on sentiment. Mm -hmm. This person is poor. Meanwhile, you are dropping your money on oh. clay soil. Oh. You're not dropping your money on fertile ground. So all this sentimental, uh, I'd rather give my money. So I see a lot of that question. I will go back to tight. I'm going, I'm going to put in so she can finish her the the airplane <laughs> analogy. So we see, I see a lot of questions like that on Twitter. Then we say, eh. So I have my tithe. Yeah, I have my money. Should I give tithe or should it's I give this uh, beggar on my street? I'm like, are you joking? You want to give God's God's to <laughs> the beggar? On you. Who created you? Created the money? Created the beggar? You mm -hmm. want to carry? <laughs> you are being sentimental. Oh, you will just go and carry your money now. Give it to a channel that will block that money forever. But it is a lot of. These things are spiritual. You don't just look at people and say, eh, this person is suffering. I don't I, let me carry my tithe and give the person. You just end up blocking your channel of blessing. So we really need to be careful out there. It's probably ready for us. Fumi, can you hear us? The network has struck again. I think our network has gone off. Okay. So it's really important that people know. So let's talk about tithing and then we'll go back. I like the fact that you even brought that mm. up. Right? So when we talk about tithing, you are not giving to your pastor. First of all, if you do not tithe, you are not obeying God because it's in the Bible. But they don't. They if don't you do not, not tithe. Then you are disobeying God. You are disobeying. Is the same? Is the same thing as saying God is saying don't fornicate, right. and you are saying okay, yes, God has said I should not fornicate, so I'm not going to fornicate. If you go ahead and not pay tithe, it's the same thing. You are committing sin. But, but it's the the thing. Is, 
is that when it comes to money, people want to try to sagalo everything. Eh? It's my money. I work for it. You work for it. Have you seen people in the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> I went to the hospital the other day. If you see this man, old man, no. So we can even say, oh, he's an old man. And maybe he's even just enjoying pension or his grandchildren. I'm taking care of it. This is how they hang his leg up like this. Hmm. With this, is it POP that they used to call it plaster? I say, hey, this is somebody's husband, father, grandfather. Is the wheelchair? He looks so helpless. He looks so helpless. I'm like, ah, this life. What different kinds of <laughs> this one? They hang, they hang. Hmm. You know, they, yeah. different kinds of things. I'm like, God, look yeah. at somebody's health. So you stand there and say, hey, it's my money. I work hard for it. I work hard for it. Ah, yes, they remove oxygen from you. That's the end. Oh. oh sorry if they remove oxygen it's okay for me just keep trying to join i would i would let you if they remove oxygen from your body like this i hope you know that that's the end the yes. all this is my money is my money my strategy my strategy by the time i do one or two things i know how to make my money um. <laughs> oh. this life do you know you this, have you ever, this, there was um, a day there was a day i was so ill i could not bear I could not, I could not have found this truth. I was bent. I said, me, a full grown adult like me, <laughs> that is supposed to be somebody's mother by now, bending like an old woman because of sickness. Wow. Ah. <laughs> so, what I'm trying to explain is that there is no, there is no, uh, what's the English? I don't, I don't know the right word to say. There is no, there's no action towards this thing. You, you can't action your way out of it all oh, and so you don't know what's gonna happen so we're not even saying that you should give tight because you want to try to bribe god to keep mm. you alive or to bribe god to give you money you are giving tight because first it's the word of god you have mm. to obey it second god gave you that job so the way you the, how you honor him is by letting him say mm. ah see you this job you gave me this, this is what they gave me this is he's just asking for 10 percent and you take 90 how greedy can you be he said give me 10 can you take 90? Hmm? You see your, your eyes see entries and the 10 again. <laughs> hmm. Your eyes see entries and the 10 again. You know, he says, take 90, give me 10. Out of the 10, he's not saying, if you give me this 10, I will open the doors of hmm. blessing for you. Hmm. He's not saying, give me 10 and then let me go and flex. <laughs> he's even saying, this 10 you have given me, I will open the doors of blessings for you. Hmm. And blessings will not really come in. Okay, somebody's not going to now drop the 10. Because that's what he's talking exactly. about. By the time I give title of one million now, by the time I get out of my house, somebody will give me, call me and say, I've dropped two million. Yet. I can know. The blessing can come in form of ideas that will replicate that money. The blessing can come in form of favor, mm. that connection that people bribe their way to go through. You just enter and you say, ah, this money, something about to come, come, let's help come. The blessing can come in form of no harm comes to your family. Exactly. Things that kill people, things mm. that make people cry things that make that that when, when people go through it they will just die it because happens to, to your family and you will scale through it's no smell nothing whatsoever if the blessing can come in different ways but we have people that say ah, eh, eh, I, I give my tithe and, and nobody should give me money back there's no way in the bible where it says you give your tithe they're going to give you money back the bible says bless you. i will open the door of blessing blessing is anything you see so blessings and in the first iPhone I ever used, the first iPhone I ever used, God used to be put to, to pay. <laughs> the first iPhone I ever used, somebody said, ah, we heard that you, the, your phone was stolen, you have to take money. And I we heard that your phone was stolen, money. But I keep saying this, but the, the gala I ate on the road, <laughs> the uh, smoothie I ate on the road, the, what's that, I swear I ate on the road to go and buy the phone. Everything was catered for. Mm. That's a blessing. Exactly. It's not when somebody give you money and you pay tight one million, so somebody now call you and say it, it, it happens also, it happens like that. But that take your mind off of uh, because I gave God money, money will not come back. Do you know what long life means? Long life and good health. Good health. Good health. Good health. They don't know that you go through challenges and people will be asking you eh, you are glowing you no know? are you in this nigeria that all of us we are in this nigeria together <laughs> you're right this is so and you just be look people be looking gloomy looking sad looking but you, you are looking happy it's not like you don't have your challenges but because of the blessing of god upon your life people are looking at you like if you like this one no they suffer this exactly. is really they suffer <laughs> this one is not suffering it. but anyway you are just living your life just being a christian so giving tithes 
is not just and we, the, the, we have not deviated from the topic this is still trusting god for your finances and this is one of the ways in which you trust god for your finances tell me why you'll be collecting 100k salary and you cannot give 10k to god i don't understand hmm. they have, have reason why would you it's, be able to give 10 percent why would you be able to give 10 percent why would you want to ah this thing what 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 would that 10k do for you that the 90k will not be <laughs> Like what? What will he do? Something that you spend before you and your boss talk. Now you spent everything, and God is saying, "Just give me, give me." Spend it. <laughs> you know. So let's get back to Fimi. Fimi, please continue your the airplane analogy that we can also talk a bit about. Okay, can you hear me, please? Let me be sure that my network is back, back and better. <laughs> can, can you hear me? Hear you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, like I said, um, trusting God is one of the most challenging, um, very, very challenging thing for us to do, especially we Christians. Um, so, like I said, let me just dive into the analogy I was talking about. So, while you're boarding a plane, like I said earlier, you don't know the pilot. You don't know whether the pilot is trained, whether the pilot has been trained. And exactly, you can't even see the pilot, right? But you have that conviction in you that this pilot will take me to where to my destination, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You don't have a choice not to have. <laughs> you paid money. <laughs> you don't even have a choice not to have. You paid money already, so you, your choice will come by fire by force. So if you can trust a pilot with your life, because <laughs> moving from one destination to the other is, is the most. We all know how, what the risk, the hazard that is involved, right? So if you can trust a human being like you, how much more the Most High God who created the heaven and earth? How much more? You shouldn't ask or have any doubts at all. Don't ask any unnecessary questions at all. Just completely hand over to god Com completely trust him not halfway don't strategize for god don't don't try to use your human strategy to say if i do and do that ah maybe i will get this amount of money or maybe this this would come my way or whatever you have to totally trust god totally not halfway not quarter <laughs> it has to be total so is it that you are, you are putting you are trusting God and putting him in the equation of your finances or you are leaving him totally out. So like, 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 mm. like, like Sophia mentioned earlier, it's not negotiable. You can't negotiate it. It's either he's in or he's out. So that's, that's what, you have, that's the decision you have to make completely when it comes to trusting God with your finances. I've seen God show up in, in ways beyond my imagination, really. And one thing I know for sure is as a true believer, when when you when you decide to seek God, right, to know God more, to have an intimacy and build a relationship with Him, everything will be added unto you. The Bible says it. Every single thing. He knows your needs even before you ask them. He knows that you need this money, mm -hmm. that you need this this X Y Z thing that you are asking for. He sees your heart. So, but one thing He wants you to do is to seek Him first. Seek Him first. Don't don't make your relationship with god transactional right if i pray to god and i get money <laughs> then i'm able to pay my children's <laughs> oh, i'm able to pay my house rent i'm able to flex i'm able to buy the latest car no it can't be it doesn't work like that <laughs> it doesn't so those, those, are, those are the questions we need to ask ourselves my is my relationship with god is it transactional am i really serving him mm -hmm. who he is do i really love him for who he is right not for what i can get from him not what, from what i can receive from him so that's that's we need to change our mindset completely about that before we can totally say oh yes i'm leaning on god i'm trusting on god for my finances it will come through for you in ways beyond